Can people hear me? Some? Yes? <laughs> Wonderful, thanks. So thank you, Mary, for the introduction, and to everybody who I've had the occasion to meet and the wonderful conversations we've started. Uh, a quick word of introduction and a disclaimer. My name's Amalia, as you heard, um, and I teach a portion of this class that we're gonna be talking about. It's a team taught course. Um, and now for the disclaimer. I've taught with the program for the past two years, but I'm gonna be discussing my portion of the lecture and also Carter Hudgens, who is not able to join us. So I'm discussing, discussing the evolution of uh, this course that sort of predates me with the program. The graduate program in historic preservation, which is co-sponsored by Clemson University and the College of Charleston, wrapped up a big year in May. We graduated our 10th class of students. Um, and also very importantly, we celebrated the approval of a thorough curriculum revision from the faculty senates of both schools. Um, at a minimum, this is a milestone in that it's for the first time, uh, the two universities agree on course titles, course numbers, course descriptions, and even a program description. Behind the changed course numbers, deleted courses, new courses, and revised course descriptions lay a longer process. Deliberations stretched over several years and addressed questions familiar to all of us. Centrally, what should our students know and when should they know it? This presentation summarizes the efforts of the Clemson University and College of Charleston faculty to reimagine and revise um, its required first semester course titled Investigation Documentation Conservation or IDC. Carter sends his best regards <laughs> and his apologies that a family obligation pulled him away from this gathering at the last minute. Um, so, for, so forgiving Carter and hearing his voice and vision in this discussion, uh, I'll move on. Thinking about the purpose and content of the IDC course began more than two years ago. It tied into the overall curriculum revisions that I mentioned, also shifts in faculty, the accumulation of incremental tinkering from over the years, like we heard about in Rebecca's presentation, and also an opportunistic sensibility towards case study buildings. This presentation first covers our evaluation of this core course, and then second, I'll discuss uh, the steps we've taken to implement the aspirations that we have for the course. As a first step to evaluating IDC, uh, we needed to determine the goals and then set the content for the course, particularly in relationship to other first semester courses. IDC plays a critical role in the first semester in terms of introducing the students to the work that preservationists do. The course also must recognize the diverse backgrounds, diverse preparation, diverse skills, and a wide range of technical abilities that arrive with each new class of students. The iteration of IDC that I just discussed today, um, the version that we will undertake for the first time this upcoming fall, we see as a large, um, albeit only first step, towards an elegant solution of how to integrate fieldwork within the curriculum and enable students to gain skills in a suite of related technical abilities and ways of thinking. So in other words, IDC is a work in progress, which we hope to discuss with many of you and about which we welcome comments, recommendations, suggestions. IDC occupies an important position in the first year curriculum for our MSHP's four semester program. It is on one hand, a studio-based course that introduces new students to the program's studio culture. It is on another, an introduction to field work, measured drawings, and the translation of pencil drawings to HAB standards HAB's compliant measured drawings. IDC is third, <laughs> immersion into teamwork and the cooperative atmosphere that overarches the program. The overall curriculum conducted in the two-year course of study with our program has privileged field recording and documentation drawing to HAB standards since its inception 10 years ago. Accordingly, IDC has occupied a privileged position within the curriculum. Documentation methods, including field measurement and drawing, site mapping, recordation of cultural resources, um, all these things occupy a significant, some even argue, outsized place in the curriculum. So in exploring the sort of baseline of IDC, we realized among the faculty and with some outside reviewers um, that our operating premise was and should remain that you really can't know a building well and you can't intelligently know what to do with it until you have documented it thoroughly. 
Uh, we see documentation as a necessary first step in preservation processes, um, and therefore this is a sort of central critical skill that we very much wanted to emphasize within the curriculum. So want to sort out building phases, taking paint samples, interested in dendrochronology, from questions about use to puzzles about chronology, to first and final passes at creating rehabilitation plans and post rehab management plans, documentation drawings are for us a first step. IDC has also been a launching pad for our program's entries into the Peterson Prize competition. Um, we've been committed to HAB's documentation goals and a partner with them in several other initiatives. Um, and so the buildings that each incoming class documents in IDC eventually blooms into the Peterson Prize competition at the end of their fourth semester with the program. Um, so baby steps. Several years ago, um, before my time with the program, uh, the faculty expanded instruction and measured drawings from simply sort of measured drawings, field drawings, to incorporate also cultural landscapes and the analysis of interior finishes. This expansion um, of the course, which then became IDC, was the first step of moving the documentation course beyond drawing. These new components of the course uh, were preservation perspectives that students applied later in their courses of study, uh, but that we began to feature in the first semester course. A review of the curriculum initiated about three years ago suggested that these were steps in the right direction. The initial feedback about the direction of the class came um, through a series of assessment, assessments that were undertaken. Um, at that time, our program took on a round of progr programmatic reviews, some mandated by the College of Charleston assessment cycles, some required by accreditation review. The self-study and reports from both internal and accreditation visiting committees, we hosted three of them, in fact, affirmed that the MSHP faculty sensed that the emphasis placed on documentation was right, first of all, um, and also suggested that the sort of merging and this introduction to multiple things as well as drawing in the first semester was a good step. Faculty deliberation suggested, however, that while IDC effectively merged multiple introductions to portions of the curriculum into one course, it fell short of presenting the interdisciplinary nature of current practice. IDC, we also discovered, siloed from other first semester courses. For example, we found less inter intersection between our IDC and our American architectural courses than we would have liked. The American Al architecture course is a one semester course inherited from Clemson School of Architecture that serves as an architectural history overview course. Similarly, there was some breezy interaction between IDC and our course in historic building technologies. IDC architectural history and building materials and constructions therefore marched along parallel tracks within the first semester curriculum. We found that students applied a siloed approach to reading and understanding historic buildings and their context. We also discovered siloing internal to IDC itself. Student field work pursued architectural documentation, the documentation of interior finishes, and the documentation of landscape along these same parallel tracks. Weighty reports conveyed lots of, of data to project clients, but chapters observed these same boundaries as the sections that they were taught in. Thus, the challenges we observe is to bring the components of IDC into a more interactive posture and in the process weave IDC into a more coherent introduction to what professionals encounter. The revised IDC course, which will have its first run this fall, as I mentioned, doubles the number of credit hours from three to six and provides additional opportunity to weave observation and analysis into a layered interdisciplinary approach to documentation in conservation. The revised course in general encourages students from their first encounter with urban and rural places to understand buildings as expressions of complicated interrelated cultural processes. The course employs field-based investigation of a historic building in or near Charleston to introduce and reinforce the linkages between field documentation, the investigation of historic building methods, and the survey of cultural landscapes. So we're in the midst of, an, of this experiment. We have envisioned changes to the curriculum and this fall we'll be implementing the course. 
So for this last portion of the presentation, um, I'm going to give an example of where the course has been. I'll take you through the fruits of one IDC course's labors and offer a brief preview of the next project that we'll be taking on in the fall. In the fall of 2013, IDC examined an 1824 Charleston single house in the Anson Borough neighborhood. Located at 61 to 63 Smith Street, the house sits on the northern half of a double lot, which is why you can actually get a wide enough angle to capture this photo of it. Um, Historic Charleston Foundation purchased the property, which was under great threat due to deferred maintenance um, through their revolving fund. HCF undertook some stabilization and restoration work on the property, placed an exterior easement on the building, and sold it to its current owner in the uh, late 90s, early aughts. The current owner has energetically begun a rehabilitation of the house. She anticipates doing a great deal of the work herself, and though not antagonistic to suggestions and advice offered by preservationists, um, our program became involved in this project because of the concern about loss of historic fabric that grew from the piles of uh, construction debris that were filling up the dumpsters at the property curb. So it became critical to get what fabric remained sort of documented at the interior of this building, which we knew was going to be protected at the exterior. So as I mentioned, students look at the IDC building through a series of lenses throughout the course of the semester, and these perspectives remain legible in the final report. So I'm gonna walk through this final report um, and point out some places where we've started to bleed over into other courses a little bit better, um, but also the sort of room for growth that we see uh, in the integration of this report. So the 2013 IDC report on 61 to 63 Smith Street, the house you just looked at, opens with a synthesized history of the property. Uh, students spend a comparatively small amount of time in, ED in IDC researching the history of the building. Students are appointed to various primary and secondary sources gathered by professors and as available through archives, um, but students are largely expected to familiarize themselves with these resources without much coaching. Building from these materials and largely drawing on the skills that they simultaneously develop in a separate research methods course, the history component of the final IDC report is prepared often by an individual or small group from within the class. Similarly, students capitalize on a skill set they develop in another, again, contemporary core class for the next section of the report. An architectural description of the house is the second chapter of the report. In their architecture history and historic construction methods courses, students learn to verbalize the material and designed components of buildings. The IDC project um, architectural description chapter exercises these budding skills. The next section of the report exhibits landscape documentation, which was one of the three stain, strains um, of education within the IDC course. Photographic documentation captures the character of landscape features from the street, streetscape to paving patterns and planted species. The photos complement a site plan, which becomes part of the measured drawing set for the course. Moving inside from the site plan, a large segment of the report is measured drawings. During this portion of the class, uh, students learn HAB standards for field notes and how to translate three-dimensional architectural objects encountered in the field into two-dimensional architectural drawings in, Auto in AutoCAD. Uh, within that section of report, the measured drawings are complemented by several pages depicting the analysis of paint finishes. Uh, the paint analysis for each area within the building contains a methodology write-up, drawings, photographs, and a table to locate where the paint samples were taken. Uh, the paint stratigraphy provides additional information about the character of finishes over time and gives students exposure to material analysis and work in a conservation lab. So the level of investigation students are able to accomplish in this project during the first semester of their graduate studies is not really comprehensive enough to be considered a true historic structures report. IDC students look at one building through many of the lenses that are critical to understanding a building in depth. Students learn not only a great deal about the building, but also get to view multiple facets of the preservation field. While these aspects of IDC will be retained with the new course, the new format seeks to better integrate an understanding of structure and of historic construction methods and architectural investigation. 
the IDC case study for fall of 2014 is Pompion Chapel, also called Pumpkin Chapel, although I hesitate to use that name because I don't have quite the right southern drawl to pull it off. Um, Pompion is a back parish chapel of ease located near Hugey, South Carolina. It's on the um, National Historic L Landmark and is also on the uh, Register of Historic Places. The chapel was photographed by uh, Habs photographer Thomas T. Waterman in June of 1939, who should be credited with the remaining photos in the presentation. Uh, the greatest effort to unsilo the way students will look at this building in the upcoming IDC class is by combining the history of building construction course with the emphasis on, with its emphasis on investigation and the previous IDC course. Thus, Pompion Hill will host landscape, architectural, and finish documentation and investigation, as has been the case with past IDC projects, but will also be uh, examined in terms of construction methodology. For example, following several course lectures on masonry construction, including terminology, brick making, bond patterns, the role of mortar within the assembly, students will hold part of a class section on site at Pompion, considering the way, what they can learn about the building from the masonry physical evidence. In a guided observation and interpretation session, students will get practice applying their classroom learned skills to real world settings and even more importantly, in particular, to a building that they have already spent time looking at in great depth as they take field measurements of it and consider it in its cultural landscape. Other ideas for integration include um, asking for an executive summary document from each student at the end of the semester. This summary will ask students to briefly discuss the meaning of the building, having students reflect on what the overall message is and the takeaway from this multi-pronged documentation and interpretation course um, will simulate the difficulty of having to synthesize the findings of a large, thorough investigation such as we encounter in professional practice. Also towards the ends of exercising pattern finding, organizing and distilling knowledge to finding meaning, uh, we may instigate an additional final presentation to potential Columbus Clemson University collaborators, uh, the material scientists who work at the nearby Warren Lash Laboratory. In this exchange, students would learn about the resources in this wonderful lab facility um, and also share what they have learned about the case study building. We're excited about this potential in terms of students uh, sort of stretching and learning how to ask the sort of next steps or what, what else can we do. Practice developing interesting research questions on a specific topic of interest builds general inquisitiveness, which we obviously care about, and also simulates the process many students encounter for the first time when they attempt to arrive at a thesis topic at the beginning of their second year in the program. As I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, when channeling Carter, we are extremely welcoming of any of your thoughts and suggestions. Uh, the pedagogical rationale behind our documentation class, which we are trying to push beyond drawing, where we're coming from and headed to hopefully has sparked some of your thoughts on the topic. Look forward to being in touch with the panel and thanks for your time and attention.